Hi, it's the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your October 2016 general readings. <clears throat> I am still using the Gilded Tarot deck, drawing eight cards for the month, two cards for each week with an additional ninth card from the bottom of the deck representing your crowning card, overall energy, and general advice. Make sure to check your rising and your moon sign as well. You may find that uh, they may resonate for you a little more predictably, and you may find that watching all three uh, just gives you more peace pieces of the picture and uh, each of them may resonate for you in different areas of your life so watch all three if you can thank you thank you thank you for continuing to watch and listen and subscribe to this channel and helping it grow I see the family is almost <clears throat> just about at 11,000 strong now your support and feedback means so much to me and keep those awesome comments coming both the ones that you put directly on the video uh, feedback section and the ones that some of you take the time to send via email. I read each and every one and I absolutely love getting those updates. So thank you for that and keep them coming. Always a special thank you to those of you who continue to reach out for one-on-one -on -one readings with me. It is, as I always say, and I always mean, it is an honor and a pleasure to read for you. And I'm, I'm very grateful for the trust that you place in me to interpret and intuit the cards for you. And thank you to my regular clients as well uh, <clears throat> for the chance to be an ongoing part of your lives as they continue to play out and for the updates that you send as well. And if any of you are interested in having a personal one-on-one -on -one reading with me and you haven't read with me before, you can click on the little About button on my YouTube channel's homepage and that'll give you a little more information and detail on myself, the services I offer, and my contact information and email which is Maggie, the number one, McGuire at gmail.com. If you're interested in a reading, send me an email. I would be delighted to work with you. So moving right along, this reading is, <clears throat> excuse me, for Aries for October 2016. Aries, October 2016. What does the month of October hold for the fire sign of Aries? October 2016 for Aries. The babies of the zodiac, my restless adventurers. Show me the energies for the fire sign of Aries for October 2016. What do they need to see? What do they need to know? Okay. <clears throat> okay, Aries, we begin with the Eight of Cups followed by the Three of Swords, the Knight of Pentacles, followed by the Two of Pentacles, the Hermit, followed by the Five of Swords, okay, and the Nine of Cups, followed by the Seven of Pentacles, and from the bottom of the deck, your crowning card overall energy is the Six of Wands. Lovely crowning energy there, Aries. So let's just take a quick look. <clears throat> it looks like a month of consideration and reflection and assessment for a lot of you Aries out there watching this. Um, it does look like there is some walking away from emotional pain of some kind or disappointment, which is always a good thing to see, as long as you're taking the value of the lessons with you, of course. So let's begin, Aries. So at the beginning of October 2016, or the end of September, as I am recording these in the last few days of September, we find ourselves with the energy of the Eight of Cups, followed by the Three of Swords. So the Eight of Cups, this is a card of leaving something behind, walking away. Cups is governed by the element of water. So it's all about that fluid, watery world of feelings, emotions, relationships, loves, how we relate to people and our emotions in general. The Eight of Cups, <clears throat> excuse me, is a card it's a card of leaving, of walking away, and, and eight being a number of movement to change anyway. You can see you can see that the man on this card has turned his back on these eight cups. Some of them are tipped over and spilled out, and some of them are still upright. The implication being that he has tasted and drunk from most, if not all, of these cups. And while during that process he may have thought they were what he want, wanted, or may have found them distracting or entertainment or 
or even brought him a sense of happiness and satisfaction. Ultimately, he's made the decision that uh, they weren't what he wanted or it turned out to be something other than what he thought they would be. There's a sense of disillusionment and disappointment with the Eight of Cups and <clears throat> an energy uh, of having turned your back completely away on something. It's a pretty decisive energy. It's not a card of do I or don't I. This man has um, made a definitive decision to turn his back on whatever this situation, this disillusionment or disappointment represents. Uh, and he's done with it. He's made the decision to move on. He is dressed for travel. He has his hat and his cloak on. He's holding his walking stick in his hand. He's surveying the horizon and he's trying to decide which way to go in. But he's already made the decision. It's time for change. It's time for movement. There's a spiritual intuitiveness about this card too, as there often is in cards that show the moon, which point to that deeper intuitive side of us, uh, particularly in trying to decide what direction to go in next. Um, it's always a good thing to connect with whatever you're your source of spirit or divinity is and your own intuitive sense of knowing uh, to know where to go as you're uh, walking away, making the decision to have walked away from something, Aries, which you have found disillusioning, disappointing, dissatisfying. <clears throat> there uh, seems to have been a sense of, of heartbreak or heartache or deep emotional disappointment. Um, that Eight of Cups is paired with the Three of Swords. Now, swords is governed by the element of air. Swords is a suit that governs our ideas, words, thoughts, outlooks, perspectives, belief systems, how we see things, how we look at things, what we think. The Three of Swords, as you can tell by the picture on this card, is it's a card of, it can be a card of heartbreak, of heartache, it can be a card of... Um, deep emotional disappointment, sadness, emotional pain. Uh, sometimes in relationship issues, it can come up when there has been a sense of betrayal or a sense of, or uh, issues with infidelity or cheating as there is a triangular energy with all three of these swords here. Uh, for some of you, of course, there's a lot of you watching. It's a general reading. It's not going to resonate the same. Uh, the story is going to split off a variety of different ways. For some of you, this what you're walking away from could be a broken relationship, a failed relationship, uh, heartache, heartache. Perhaps uh, you, you were betrayed within a relationship. For others of you, <clears throat> there's quite a lot of pentacles energy in this spread. For others of you, what you're walking away from is a situation at work. It could be work relationships, a job for some of you. For some of you, a career path entirely. So it's a sense as we enter uh, October 2016, Aries, that you have made your mind up that you're finished with something. It's no longer serving you and in fact has caused you uh, at least a pretty significant sense of disappointment, if not outright emotional pain and, and heartache. But right after that, we have an offer coming in to be considered. Right next to that, we have the Knight of Pentacles, followed by the Two of Pentacles. So here's your some pentacles energy coming in here. <clears throat> pentacles is governed by the element of earth. It's a suit that governs things in the earthly material physical environment often. Uh, things like money, finances, resources, property, job, etc. Tangible things we can usually see, touch, and feel. You can, of course, apply the same energy in spirituality and love and relationships. I mean, we don't leave pentacles out and we do cards for that as well. And for some of you, this is, is definitely going to be uh, resonate more as a relationship reading. But even there, the energy is, is pretty tangible and palpable or it represents... Um, you know, tangible results of the efforts we put into uh, those relationships. Knights are the deliverers of the tarot. They are the bringers of the tarot. Uh, when you consider their roles in the medieval worlds, they were the ones that were sent out to achieve, to bring back results, missions, quests. They were also known for being somewhat spontaneous and impulsive, associated with a fair amount of speed because they were knights. They were known to go charging off to accomplish uh, something. Uh, and they were usually very focused and single-minded and dedicated about that. <clears throat> so this night, uh, knights in the upright position often represent uh, offers, offerings, opportunities, um, potential for results being brought in. And this is the Knight of Pentacles. So out of all four of the knights, he's probably the slowest, um, even though it's still moving 
fairly fast because he's governed by Earth, which is more slow, more uh, rooted, solid, reliable. This would be an offering, Aries, an offer, an opportunity coming your way with that Pentacles energy. For some of you, this is going to be a very tangible offer. Uh, it could be an offer of money, finances, resources, uh, something that helps you um, in this moving away energy. Uh, for some of you, this is going to represent a job offer, an opportunity, a promotion perhaps already in a currently established job. Uh, perhaps the opportunity to shift into a different career path entirely. For some of you in terms of relationship, this could be, uh, you know, another offer uh, of a relationship, somebody coming to you, perhaps making their feelings known, asking you out, um, uh, or somebody that you've been seeing perhaps that wants to take it a little bit deeper, maybe a little more established commitment. It's a solid, stable, reliable offer. It's governed by earth. Uh, it has the potential to grow uh, deeper roots and be quite successful. There's a solid sense of reliability and continuity about this offer. It's a very good looking offer. <clears throat> and, and, and the fact that it's pentacles could also represent um, that the person who is making the offer uh, could be an earth sign, although it's not a given because this is a general reading, which is Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. But it looks like a very good offer and opportunity is coming your way, uh, however it plays out specifically for you, Aries. Now that Nine of Pentacles is accompanied by the Two of Pentacles. This is your consideration and kind of juggling card. Now this is going to play out different ways. For some of you, this is going to represent... Um, the consideration period of whatever this this offer is, whether it's 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 a new romance or taking a currently established relationship a little bit further, uh, a new job, a new job path, a new career path, um, a promotion, uh, perhaps the opportunity or the chance to move as well. Um, perhaps some of you that moving away from something uh, could include an actual physical relocation as well. There's an opportunity that's going to help you in this process um, uh, or that has the potential to kind of help you move through this. And it could be, again, for those of you in job, it could be the reason why you are able to walk away from something you found ultimately disappointing and disillusioning uh, because you have this other offer opportunity in front of you. And the Two of Pentacles is a card about, about juggling that. It can be a card that points to needing to kind of reflect and think back and forth between two things. It can also represent um, a need to stop kind of juggling and... Uh, there, because there's an awful lot of effort being put into keeping these two things in the air. Um, it could represent needing to decide between one job or another. Um, again, if it's a relationship offer, it's consideration, reflection, energy. Sometimes this card comes up when uh, people are juggling too much in their lives. There's a sense of overwork and, and, and really of not being focused enough on any one thing and needing to kind of perhaps pare things down in your life uh, in order to devote yourself more more successfully in one area versus another, whether that's relationship, job, etc. Because even though this man is being successful in uh, keeping these two pinnacles in the air, it's taking all of his concentration, all of his focus, all of his attention to do that. And while he's in the middle of doing that, there's some, some beautiful and interesting things going on behind him. There's this beautiful rainbow, the ship coming in, a dolphin uh, leaping in the waters, all kind of symbolic for good luck, good news, good fortune, uh, good messages but he can't see any of them and in fact he might miss them all together because he's so focused on on what's going on in his life what's going on in front of him so it could also be an indicator that perhaps you need to slow down or make a decision um, about what you're actually going to focus on uh, <clears throat> particularly in light of whatever this opportunity or, or option offer is in front of you I feel like for a lot of you um, it's it is work and career related or job related and um, I feel like for a lot of you the reflection energy is because there's a lot of taking a step back and looking we've got the hermit next to this too a seven of pentacles which is reflection and assessment paired with that nine of cups it's as if you're already leaving one situation you don't find um, that, that didn't turn out the way you wanted it to. There's another one in front of you, but it doesn't feel like you're being spontaneous and impulsive about it. And, and 
uh, and if you are, there's advice saying not to be, because now it's really it's really time to take a step back and and take a look at what you really want um, at this point in your job, in your career path, in your relationship. Where does your happiness and joy uh, really lie? I I think this reading feels strongly oriented towards taking a, a step back and seriously reflecting on where it is you want to go so that you don't just go from one disappointing situation, job, career path, or relationship right into another one that's similar. <clears throat> And um, the next set of cards kind of echo that energy and advice as well. We have the Hermit Major Arcana card paired with the Five of Swords. So the Hermit, Major Arcana card, significant profound energy and advice here um, could represent a significant life shift or change as well, which I feel like this offer opportunity could be. But, but again, I'm getting a strong uh, contemplation energy and strong advice about contemplation. Don't just jump right into this, uh, Aries, which sometimes you are prone to do, being that lovely, adventurous uh, baby of the zodiac fire sign. Um, you know that you have a lovely spontaneous impulsive energy but again you don't want to go from one uh, situation uh, that was not what you wanted it to be into another one so it's all about taking a step back the hermit's all about that the hermit's all about taking a step back reflecting assessing and using your experience using your own wisdom and intuition that you've gained so far to help you kind of make a decision about whatever this is and and, and also perhaps there may be some some healing time some quiet healing time that's needed as you're moving away from whatever the source of this uh heartache or, or disappointment or disillusionment was as well uh, you can see that this man is this it portrays this aged man uh, old because we usually view people you know as the wise old sages having had more wisdom and experience than we do simply because they've had more time to walk the path of life he's carefully slowly picking his way across this narrow somewhat dangerous precipice and he's using the light of the lantern so <clears throat> to light his path so that he can see which steps to take so he doesn't make a wrong move and fall off the cliff and the light of this lantern as all things on a tarot card are is symbolic it's symbolic for his wisdom his experience, his knowledge, everything that he's learned through trial and error, success, failure, triumph, defeat, all of those. This, the light of this lantern represents the culmination of everything that he's learned from life. And he's using that to help guide him over this precipice. But in order to do that, he has to kind of retreat and perhaps be alone for a while. It doesn't mean to say that you don't perhaps have supportive people around you. Or in fact, it, you could also, it could also be secondarily seeking out someone who also may uh, kind of manifest this energy to get advice, feedback, and guidance. But it's, it is primarily about taking a step back and using your own experience, your own wisdom. What does your gut tell you? What does your intuition tell you and in how to walk through this? And for you, Aries, I think it's about what do I really want? Where does my happiness really lie? This is a great opportunity that's in front of you, it looks like, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to take it if that's not what's going to make you happy, where you're going to find fulfillment and purpose. And the Hermit is all about kind of taking a step back and really looking at that and looking at your past, looking at your history and kind of using that as a gauge, as a compass. Now the Hermit is paired with the Five of Swords. We've got that mental energy in Swords again. The Five of Swords is technically, technically a victory card. This man is one, uh, but it can represent a shallow victory. And and even if it doesn't, the question that always accompanies the Five of Swords is, is something worth it? You can see that the man on this card has just finished a battle or a challenge of some kind, and he's won or he's achieved success. His opponents or foes are on the grass behind him, obviously defeated. He's gathered up all their weapons and he's holding his own aloft in victory. Woohoo, I won. But <clears throat> the air of this card, the general feeling of this card is still kind of grim and murky. The colors, uh, uh, he's tired, defeated, worn out. He doesn't look particularly happy. He's bleeding from a little cut on his forehead. This battle has cost a lot. And the question is, is it worth continuing? Is it worth investing in? Um, <clears throat> this could relate to whatever this offer or option or opportunity is in front of you. Um, this is something that perhaps it could be an offer to continue on a certain path that you're on. Uh, but for some of you and, that, and for whom that resonates, it feels like... Um, Perhaps there's been a victory or there is potential for that, but, but a lot goes into it. It feels like it, it costs a lot. The, the cost is high. Now, only you can decide, utilizing that hermit energy, if something is worth uh, uh, 
uh, investing in, even if it comes at a pretty high cost. Sometimes it is worth it, sometimes it isn't. Um, this reading is strongly asking you to really go within and take a look at that. For some of you, this can uh, this can also resonate. Um, this Hermit and Five of Swords energy um, may not be specifically related to the offer, although it's kind of, I think, tangled up in there as well. But also some of that energy could be just kind of reflecting on whatever it is that you're walking away from at the beginning of the month, that disillusionment and, and heartache and disappointment, um, and kind of figuring out... Uh, maybe where you could do things differently the next time. Um, but really taking a step back to ask yourself if something is worth investing in or continuing in, or for the offer itself, what's the cost going to be? What's the, the house's path going to play out? And it's really, it's a very smart, rooted, grounded, solid energy, Aries. It's, it's, it's not jumping right in. It's taking a step back and taking a look at what do you really want? Where do you find your joy, your happiness, and fulfillment? Whether this is job, career path, projects, uh, home, relationships. Um, I feel like for a lot of you, it's more in that pentacles, earth energy. But again, it's going to play out differently because there's so many of you watching. And it looks like this energy kind of continues throughout most of the month because at or towards the end of October 2016, Aries, we find ourselves with the energy of the Nine of Cups followed by the Seven of Pentacles. So the Nine of Cups, we have that suit, again, that emotional suit, feelings, emotions, relationships, love. The Nine of Cups is pretty much universally referred to as the wish fulfillment card, the dream coming true, having everything you want, uh, having an overabundance. Um, as opposed to the Ten of Cups, uh, which is having all your cups filled, and, and in a more of an emotionally content sort of way, this is also an emotionally fulfilling, abundant sort of way, but it has less of a spiritual feel and more of a sensual, physical, decadent kind of fulfillment. Um, still beautiful energy, though. It's getting what you want, having not just enough, but more than enough, as displayed by this man here, who in other tarot decks, he's portrayed as kind of rotund, portly, with a big belly, the implication being that he has more than enough to eat, more than enough to drink. Uh, uh, more enough that he could just have all these other eight cups filled, ready to just share with everybody around, share and celebrate with friends and family. It's a card of getting what you want and having an overabundance, particularly in, in like your physical surroundings and comforts. And it's paired with the Seven of Pentacles. Here's more reflection energy here. We have the Pentacle suit again, that earth energy. It's harvest time on this card. This woman has planted the seed, she's grown the crop, the tree has grown, the fruit has grown, it's ripened now and it's ready to be picked. You can see the ladder here is ready for her to climb up and pick the fruit, uh, represented by these pentacles. Whatever it is that you've invested in or that you're thinking of investing in this offer, I think it's directly related to this offer or opportunity. She has a basket, but she hasn't yet begun to pick because she's at that place where she's kind of taking a step back and looking at what's there, What what is the harvest. Was it worth the effort she put into it? Uh, is it worth continuing? Is it even worth picking? Did she get what she expected to get? Did she get more than what she expected? Is it worth planting the same crop next year or going in a completely different direction? It's a seven. It's a card of reflection, assessment. It's right next to that five of swords, that hermit energy too. It's all about this month, Aries, taking a step back and going, what have I been doing in this particular area of my life or in perhaps all the areas of, your, of my life? Do I want to do something different? Here's yet another opportunity or, or option or offer, and I've just walked away from something else. Now let's look at this one. Do I really want to invest in this? Is this good for me? Looking back over at history, maybe you don't want to repeat the same things. Where is my true joy and happiness? Where am I going to find this, this sense of abundance? It's reflecting and assessing on that. And I think for you, it's kind of a combination of energies. It's about what you're, you're walking away from, what opportunities are in front of you, and really trying to, to take a look at um, kind of almost an unusually contemplative energy for you, Aries. Where is my joy and fulfillment? What do I really want? How do I go about doing that? Um, is what's being presented to me or this offer or opportunity I have, is it going to bring me joy and happiness in a very real, tangible way? So it feels like that continues throughout the month. It's a great reading. Um, I feel like I feel like the next chapter will be revealed kind of in in November, maybe at the beginning of October. But it looks like this is the energy. It's it's a nice, quiet, contemplative energy. And in terms of advice, it's kind of go within this month. Take a look at 
at the past, kind of take an overview of it, reflect and assess um, what you've walked away from, uh, what opportunities or options might be in front of you. And um, before just jumping impulsively into something because you've just left something behind um, that was perhaps painful or dis disillusioning for you, stop and ask yourself, take some time out, maybe some time away and ask yourself, what you really want, where your joy and happiness really is, um, in whatever sector of this of your life that this represents, and maybe some of you, it's your whole life you're looking at, uh, it, because that's what it's about: your happiness, your joy, your success, uh, your crowning card too is the six of wands, triumph, success, victory. I uh, can also represent. Um, uh, a recognition, even public recognition, for your achievements, for your efforts. Um, for some of you, this offer, opportunity, options in front of you is comes with uh, a, a promotion or, or a acknowledgement or recognition. Perhaps you're being offered a promotion for something. Um, it feels like whatever it is, I think perhaps in some small way is kind of helping you move away from this, this other painful situation. Um, And the Six of Wands is a card of success and triumph. Um, I'm not getting a strong feeling that there's like a huge success this month. It's just kind of overall energy on on where this actually lies for you, examining what this actually means for you. For some of you, this offer is like some of you may be getting a promotion, which is an acknowledgement of your achievement. Some of you may be being recognized this month for something that you just achieved or triumphed or just kind of got through. Um, again, it's going to play out differently. Uh, but it's great crowning energy to have. It does uh, almost ensure victory, success, triumph. But I think there's just a deeper, a deeper message of what does that really mean for you? What would success, victory, triumph, joy, fulfillment, happiness, what does that really look like for you? Taking a, a really deep step back, look, quit, quit juggling things, maybe put the pentacles down for a bit and actually examine this and explore this and take, take advantage of the month of October to do that. And I, I feel like uh, we're going to see more of what you decide um, next month. But of course, you are in Aries and you do tend to kind of jump right into things sometimes. So perhaps it'll play out for you before uh, November. You'll have to let me know about that. So Aries, that's pretty much your reading. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it has, uh, uh, I hope you at least find it useful and uh, has given you a little food for thought and some insight on walking through October. And I thank you very much for watching it. And again, if any of you are interested in a personal one-on-one -on -one reading, you can click on the little about button on my YouTube channel's homepage and you can email me directly at Maggie, the number one, McGuire at gmail.com. I would be most happy to work with you. Uh, I'm asked about turnaround time also and I do readings full time so I'm pretty good at getting back with you quite quickly and setting something up within a timely fashion, almost always within two weeks, sometimes as soon as a couple of days. It really just depends on scheduling. Uh, whether it's live and recorded as well. So if you're interested, send me an email and we'll go from there. Thank you so much, Aries. And until I see you all again in a couple of weeks for the mid-month readings, as always, I wish you joy, peace, blessings, and a happy life. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.